welcome back to Dimension 20 Live presents Fantasy High Sophomore Year. I'm your humble Dungeon Master, Brandon Lee Mulligan. With me, as always, are our intrepid heroes. Say hi, intrepid heroes. Hi, hi intrepid hi. heroes. Oh, gosh, guys, this is our our last uh, live episode before the holiday break. We're going to be off for the next two weeks uh, for Christmas and New Year's. Uh, happy holidays to all of you guys at home, and happy New Year's, because we won't see you before the New Year's. Um, we also uh, uh, are going to be coming back January 8th. That'll be the next time, so make sure to tune in 7 p.m. Pacific. Uh, on January 8th. That'll be the next time to come hang out. Um, also wanted to say that we still have that promo code NICE for 69% off your first month of Dropout if you sign up for dropout.tv where you can catch all these many seasons of our fun actual play show Dimension 20. We have Fantasy High which started in season one. We also have the Unsleeping City and a bunch of other fun content on dropout.tv. Also, we've got a bunch of merch. You can head over to our merch store and get stuff in time for the lovely holidays coming up. You got uh, uh, this shirt, uh, 69 and heel, a little polygon with uh, 69 on it. You got uh, the Rog Bark Rock special here. Check it out. I'm gay. Hey. Uh, hey. I'm walking here. I'm gay. <laughs> yeah. I'm gay. Um, and then we also have this uh, wow. map. Uh, isn't that fun? Ooh. A map of the city of Leviathan. Wow. Wow. That's so cool. Um, Ooh, that um, get your own map of the That's pirate really city nice. here. That's beautiful. That's yeah. gorgeous. I like that for what Christmas. Is, if yes. Yeah, looking too. to get me a Christmas present. What kind of hide is that on? Thanks. What kind of hide is that yeah. on? Uh, only the finest uh, animal pelt, beast pelt, uh, yes. that Kinko's offers. Yes. Um, uh, uh, last we left off our intrepid heroes, they had teleported from the pirate city of Leviathan to the elven lands of Falano. You see our intrepid heroes are on their spring break mission to retrieve the crown of the Nightmare King. Their adventure brought them to Bastion City in the Hotel Cavalier, to the pirate city of Leviathan, and has now brought them to the elven land of Falinel, where their companion and friend, Adine Abernet, has been seized by elven authorities as the elven oracle, and is being kept along with her sister, Aelwyn Abernet, in Calethrio Tower. We have not gone over to Clethriel Tower, we have instead gone to the lands of the Lomanelda, which is Fabian's mom's family uh, here in Balanel. Uh, the quest continues for the Crown of the Nightmare King, and we venture back into the world of Spire. Mm. Ida Egfort <laughs> raises her hands, runes of fire sweep around you, and uh, the hang van with the, uh, you know, is disanimated body of the hangman still atop it. Uh, Rog Barkrock, Galir and uh, Faith, Sandra Lynn Faith, uh, Tracker O'Shaughnessy, uh, and Cathil to the Black, along with five of our intrepid heroes. Oh, and Boggy and Baxter as well. No, Boggy's with you. Boggy's with me. How uh, dare you? Baxter the Griffin um, appear in deep and ancient forests. Tall trees of twilight bark glow huh. deeply in the presence of the setting sun. The forest floor is soft with green grass, and you see blossoms descend from the heights of branches far above. The blossoms float gently and are kissed by feet of butterflies that alight and disappear in motes of magic. Somber and solemn reflection on the beauty of the natural world fills this place. You notice there are no mud puddles or piles of leaves or twigs or brambles anywhere. The forest floor is kept stately and pristine with grass and there are no low branches on any of these trees. The trunks of the trees grow straight and tall for a hundred or more feet up, which means that the visibility of the forest extends wide in all directions. You can see as it slopes, you hear the babbling of clear brooks. A single deer, eight-pointed antlers above its head, walks stately through the forest. Okay, this is Eggfort's creature that he made me. Hi. A single tear from the cheek of the oh. deer turns into a moat of stardust. The deer what? gazes and reflects upon it, and the deer prances away into the forest. Oh, sorry. It's 
like that deer had a moment. <laughs> I don't know. I guess maybe I have to build up trust with it. Who was I coming out of feral animal like yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. You should get it a gift. Okay. <laughs> This yeah. place is... Our friend has been kidnapped. Right. <laughs> uh, Ida looks at all of you and says, this place is extremely beautiful. It is unsettling. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you hear far off a few plaintive notes of a melody so deep and rich and sorrowful that it can only serve to stir your heart and almost Freeze you where you're, you stand with its unearthly beauty. Uh, set to a minor chord with like butterfly notes, sort of <laughs> sad trailing whisper song. The uh, joke takes out his crystal and starts shazamming. <laughs> uh, with no cell tower here, you have no data. Um, <laughs> Uh, that's the worst thing that's happened because he didn't have any cell service. I think it's yeah. Sophia Stevens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Nice. Do you hear that? Michigan. It's Michigan. Yeah. yeah. Um, Deep guy. What that's do you good. guys do here in the woods? Uh, Should we, we try to make a puddle? Up on whoever's playing that music. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. actually, can I, uh, I don't know how, I just like, I'm going to be doing this all the time. I've got message and I can just point my finger towards, I just want to like point in every direction and try to message Adine. So this message cantrip radar <laughs> starts uh, binging off. Like a sprinkler. So as uh, uh, you hear that, that plaintive singing off in the distance, uh, and you move your way through the woodlands towards that uh, towards that place. Am I in the? Are we in the van? We're in the yeah, van. Um, oh, you, if you want, you just teleported. So if you we want, just, I'll get in the van. You can. I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna walk alongside. I'm gonna take some. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna look for like a couple of big leaves <laughs> and cover the van. <laughs> <laughs> a um, couple big leaves to cover look, the van. Where's um. <laughs> Uh, Sandra Lynn, does she have any like survival skills that we could maybe like hide the van a little bit? Um, I mean, uh, yeah, we well, see that she, uh, Sandra Lynn, can cast, uh, but, but, but well, she doesn't have it prepared right now. Um, see, she says, uh, I don't know if we should be worried about stealth right at okay. this moment. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Deer was crying stardust. I know. Like, I'm gonna make a little mound um, as if an offering and place a clove cigarette and write in a circle around it. To the many antlered deer who cried, stars love fig. Um, as you place that fig on the ground, or as you place that clove on the ground, um, and there's like a sort of crushed little like cigarette butt, you suddenly hear. It's not used, it's fresh. It's a fresh cigarette? Wow. Um, you feel the wind kick up. Um, you are Kristen. <laughs> a tall. Regal green robes and a silver circlet. He has sort of like a receding hairline, like a widow's peak, but there's a little jut in the front. This long, platinum white blonde hair. And he has this eternal youth of an elf, and you can see from the crinkle of his eyes, there are a few signs of aging in that kind of Elrond way, where it's like, uh, he has the look of a like dude in his late 40s, early 50s who's kept it really tight, you know, and really taking mm. care of his body. Um, you see, he looks off with shimmering blue eyes and he appears as if by magic. Ah, I see you deposit your cigarette here on the pristine floor of the forest. Oh, it's not trash, it's an offering. I met my future beast. <laughs> hmm. I don't know what that's about, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it's still trash. Please don't put cigarettes on the ground. It's not a cigarette, it's a clove. <clears throat> All natural. I see you have come here just in time. <laughs> I am Telemine Luminelta. Grandpapa? He looks at you and says, Fabian. Uh, I mean, 
we, uh, I, I mean, uh, that's catchy. Fabian, no, it is. It's, Fabian. Uh, we kind Fabian. of say, say Caster. We say Fabian. <laughs> you see, he approaches you, and as he moves, you see that the hem of his robe, as it moves perfectly, only touches the very tips of the grass, and his movements are so supernaturally graceful. He Ooh. comes close to you and goes. <laughs> Ew, no, <laughs> touches illegal, your cheek. Illegal. You see, he says, "Can it be, my grandson? You're, I, you're, I've heard story of you. You're my mother Hilarial's uh, father. Yes, my daughter Hilariel Lomanelda of Kai Lomenura." Uh, chanting elven voices emerge from the air around him. <laughs> he just has his hand on his gun. <laughs> I can't believe I'm half this. You see, he, uh, you see, your mom goes, you are not half this. These are high elves. These are not okay. wood elves. Okay. Um, you see, Galir says, the beauty of the elven homeland. I think I can be of some aid here. <laughs> Honored elder, I am Galir Faith, a diplomat and courtier of the elven folk. Well have you kept these woods. They are despoiled not by trash or stains or refuse of any kind. I don't know why he would have to mention that. Um, I give him bardic inspiration and I also do press the digitation to make his cheeks look just rosier and more. <laughs> Less sallow. He hasn't like shaved in a few days because he's been on this adventure, so he is like scruffy and dirty. He has like big pit stains. Um, so that's a 1d8 from My your. Uh... My body inspiration. Okay. What are all those guys? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna roll in the box of doom real quick. What? what? Why? I'm gonna roll in the box of doom. Nobody asked Galir to talk. <laughs> uh, in the box of doom, super Good. quick. Yeah. That's a natural 18. Oh, okay. Plus five. Hey. There you go. Minus two from his uh, uh, natural charisma, but that's above 20. Um, you see that Telemine um, looks at you and says, <coughs> You are escorted to the land of the elves by members of the elven people. And you have brought my grandson. Tell me, Fabian, Araya Marius, Seekaster, <laughs> what has brought you here to Kailo Menura? Um, well, so we're, I am in high school, and I, uh, we're doing our school project uh, for, uh, for our final grade for sophomore year. <laughs> and, um, he's tracking, he's tracking. <laughs> and um, we, uh, our friend, has been uh, captured uh, because uh, they're important, and so we're doing some uh, we're doing reconnaissance to get them back. He reaches out without looking, and a single blossom alights on his hand, and he is weeping without moving his face. <laughs> and brings, I'm so sorry. He brings the blossom up and says, "You, my beautiful grandson, like this blossom." Your human blood has brought mortality to our family. You will one day die. Oh, it died that on me. Blossom kind of goes into your mouth. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. I mean, I was just telling you what we were doing here, and your response was that I'm, I'm going to die. <laughs> Again, it's a okay. He's doing okay. Um, <laughs> it's okay. You can move your face when you do that. You can just move it over. Uh, thousands of years old. Grandpapa, are Where's, you okay? <laughs> this is such a weird. Where's the right? Uh, can I roll <laughs> just an, a perception, an insight check? Yeah, roll an insight check. Uh, insight. I should know this by now. Uh, at fourteen. Um. <laughs> What are you looking for here? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> um, this is bad. Uh, but you think that you think that you are in good, it, it, clearly he is like, Galir said the right stuff and Fabian is much beloved by this old man who he <laughs> has never met. Um, you see as you look at him, you see he smiles and says, 
What do you see when you gaze upon my face? Well, my first thought is just the idea of time, and then sort of just the idea of going real slow. Mm. And then kind of the idea of just sort of taking a nap. You see, he looks and says, a nap. I don't suppose people of your kind can nap. Your time is so short. You can no, nap, anyone nap can nap. Lot. We nap a lot. To think. You will live for only 20 years, and yet what? you still no, 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 Okay, no. but you can live forever, and you don't eat fast food. What? You can live forever, and you don't eat junk food. What is fast food? So just like, like a hamburger. Uh, a or a french fry. Oh. <laughs> you're like, you, do you know of <laughs> elves who are keepers of the elven oracle? Yes. My best friend was taken. Uh, Our best friend. We're all good friends. Yeah. She is mortal and has died and has been taken across. No, yeah. she's no, also a high I guess she's elf. immortal. Uh, she, or what do you call yourself? Most kind, of close to immortal? Walk with me through the far rest. I live longer than 20 years, I have <laughs> You see, he opens his arms wide and says, Welcome for what joy it may bring you. To Kylo, men you, hala! And you see that uh, blossoms explode <laughs> and an illusion parts and you see a vast grotto. There's like a crystal clear lake of rocks and this like beautiful peach alabaster ivory elven villa of like warm looking stone covered in like trellises and ancient trees overlooking streams like, under this grotto. And you see like dozens or even hundreds of uh, elven youths that are like laughing and jumping into the stream and playing like on blankets eating fruit and uh, just generally like this like sweet summer palace. Um, Where are the teenagers? Where are the grumpy grouchy teenagers? Tenajaris. Hmm? Tenajaris. Oh, <laughs> he's saying the elven he didn't say You're word, not right. even reading it. What? <laughs> Teenagers. <laughs> Tanjaris. <laughs> Teenagers. Can, Tangerine. I'm looking for a I know not of this word you have. Teen. Time. Tangers. Tiger. <laughs> you added a G. He said ager. I'm saying what you're all saying. <laughs> no, you're not. The important thing is this. Eliminate. <laughs> okay, sir. Yes. I feel like you, we could say anything and we would just keep going on whatever. Yeah, yeah. You're recording. My, my name is Fig. Figuero. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. My name's Corgo. Tor Judge. Tor Judge? Honestly, I might start calling him George Judge. George Judge. George Judge. George Judge is kind of cool. He sees us. You have come from strange lands beyond. You have come with your friends to think my grandson has brought orc and goblin and human to this <laughs> realm. And I see you have brought this iron. <laughs> I don't, it's a van. It's my van. It's don't, a van. It, By the way, do you have a gas station here? <laughs> we don't need gas. We have a crystal in it. Because we don't need one, if you have it. We won't need a gas Pop station. quiz. You guys simply must stop talking to him. I He's like only going to I want him to say man. Yeah, I just keep hoping he says words back to us. This iron <laughs> fortress. This fortress it's wagon. It's a van. It belongs, Bam. <laughs> it belongs to him. This guy. It's mine. You have tamed this iron beast. You see, he yeah. approaches the van and says, you may pass in these lands, for your judge has brought you here. Your <laughs> judge! You see, he looks at you and says, how much longer do you have yet to live? I think a pretty long time. <laughs> it doesn't, I'm not close to dying. I'm he pretty already dying. died I've once. To the doctor so. Yeah, it's true, so have I. Do I've you died know once something? and I came back to life. I have died before. Jesus? Uh, Helio and everyone involved are all uh, bros. <laughs> bros? 
<laughs> yeah. There's gotta be bras. some crossover in the words that we say. <laughs> what is what is bra? Brother? Do you know do you know brother? Brother, yes. yes. Our friend is the elven oracle and she got taken away by a bunch of uh, sleek, sexy elves. Yes. Yeah, would ah, you? the elven people are all sleek and sexy, I am afraid. So that no, would but be bad landed. What's that? What? What do people, what does the elven oracle usually mean to the elvish people? And how might the elven oracle be used in a bad way? Without yes. the elven oracle, we are lost. Do you know where the Abernant family lives here? The Abernant family has had all of their estate and wealth reclaimed by the Court of Stars for their treachery and failure to prevent a war with Solis. The betrayal and treason of Erean Wen has not gone without notice. However, the Lomanelda have long remained removed from the political strife of the Court of Stars. In the opinion of myself, the Abernants were callous and cruel, power hungry, to think that they would have left the immortal shores of Falamel. Where else could you see this, for example? And you see that there's a woman who's standing in a vined archway and the wind blows a diaphanous white gown and she just dances in the archway. And you see, he says, she's been doing that for 300 years. Is that her, is that her career? Is that her, that's her? Karar. <laughs> uh, is that her job? Her job? Job. Uh, is, oh god! Is that and what I she does for money? So where would we find <laughs> Aelwyn? You see, it says Aelwyn Abernant, the sister of Adain. Yes. I know not. Has your quest brought you here to the lands of the Loman Elder, seeking without answer? Well, we, uh, we know where she is. Uh, she's uh, nearby in, a, in some sort of prison or fortress. Um, I can check. I have the dossier that has information about the location itself. <coughs> uh -huh. What do you know about the Abernant mother? Erianwe. She's the one that you said committed the great. I know not what her crimes were, but I know that she fled these shores some minutes ago. Minutes? Probably longer. Oh, Probably longer. oh, he doesn't know. He's time. doing some elf stuff. How long have we been here? You just got here this very moment. That's you... kind of true. We really have not yeah. been here for that yeah. long. Yeah, so a solid that. ten. Have you ever seen so. each other? Have you ever met? No. My darling grandson. Uh, he was leading through the grotto. Anyone here that wants to make insight or perception checks yeah. about this space that you're in, feel absolutely free. To. I just want to look for the my stag again. Uh, cool. not, not one. No. Seven, 19. 17. 17. Six. Six. Cool. Um, I got a nine to find my stag. Uh, cool. Uh, what do you What do you guys who rolled above a 15 looking for in particular? I guess I'm trying to make sure that these people aren't all under a spell or something. I think Riz is pretty paranoid. Rude guy. Riz. Um, you look around. Um, uh, you see that there there oh, are shit. some elves. You see that there are two. <laughs> elven youths that are just clad in sort of white linen shorts that otherwise are unclothed and are near this like pool. And you see one of them looks at another and says, Haldoran, have you seen my loot? And another one says, I don't know, man. Where did you leave it? And he says, I heard from Trathrain that you maybe took it. And that's a, a dick move. And you see that he shoves the kid and the other kid shoves him back. And you hear a like bit of that siren song you heard before. And the two of these like young kind of teen looking elves that were shoving each other, both relax. And you see that one of them says, conflict is pointless. New loots are easy to make. I forgive thee, Haldor. And uh, walks away. Okay. Uh, I, then I'm looking, I was looking to see if, yeah, if this was a, spell that we were seeing if this isn't really where we are, like our perception of um, Do you use any spells to confirm that? Uh, I just got a 19 on perception. Cool. You don't, I mean, there's a lot of magical shit going on here. Um, uh, Telemine actually looks and notices though. You see, he says, are you gazing at the elven youth 
deeds that abound here in Kailo Minura. I was more wondering where that music's coming from. Ah. Oh, yeah, it's so great. Where exactly is it? The exactly. Muse of Sorrow. She sings her song. I am Telomine Lominelda. I was gifted with this place after crafting a sword for the ancient king of Falanel. I am the smith of Fandrangur, sword of the North Star, blade of King Thristwin Eversong. Three thousand years ago did I craft this blade, and I was gifted with stewardship of these lands. Throughout Falanel, before elves come to an age of full maturity, but after the sweet spring of their infancy, there is a brief moment where they are gripped by a madness, where they become angry and horny and stupid, and they are banished by their families here to Kailo Minura, where we kind of just sit tight on them for the Wait, briefest so this is of moments. All horny teens, and you're just here playing lute music at them so that they won't do anything bad. Long ago, in the lore of Falinel, we found that there was truly just the briefest window of time where elves were not good to be around, and we banished them here to Kailo Minura. So this is like a different school. This is like high school. High school. Come on. <laughs> You know the word high, right? Tell them, Georgia. It's two words. <laughs> yes, but the high cho. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the high cho. That you know that. You got it. This, well, I think I gotta walk. We I gotta hang take out a walk. With the, we hang out with the elf all the time who's in that age, and she's yeah. lovely. <laughs> she did kind of brain someone with a <laughs> ladle. ladle. Yeah, she broke but who, a woman's Who of us skull. hasn't killed somebody? Sure. Yeah. Okay. What? <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're rather oh. rambunctious. I'm a rambunctious young man. Then eat of the grapes. Any grape you find is good to no eat. No one eat any no one eat a single Even grape. if you find them on the ground, no they're eat good. Anything off the ground. Uh, you're saying, you're telling I me I can eat a grape on the ground. The music the music Georgia, it won't have to eat. It won't have any. I'm just trying to. Georgia, I'm just saying, Georgia. like, eating a grape on the okay, ground. Georgia, oh, gonna, I'll eat no. a grape, and if we can all. It'll be a test. It's my grandfather's legacy. Don't eat your grandfather's grapes. Georgia, I'd start stomping grapes. Ow, ow. Um, you see that uh, this, this uh, uh, ancient elf um, turns to you and says, so you believe that your friend, Adain Abernant, and her sister, Aelwyn, were both taken by members of the Court of Stars? I, yes. Would we recognize uh, Adain's father from uh, the previous battle? Yeah, definitely. Uh, yes, uh, we, we believe that, uh, I think the Court of Stars, as well as her own father, uh, captured her, uh, and teleported away. He looks at you and says, may I speak freely amongst your company? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Okay. Anguin Abernant is a crass and small man. There is no nobility within his frame, his soul wants for only power. I believe there is no part of him that could behold the beauty of a single drop of water. You've been carrying that drop of water? This whole time. <laughs> Do you want a tissue or something? Oh, actually I was talking about for the drop of water, but yeah, there's a lot more water being made. How does it just do that? <laughs> sure. Grandpa, we, are you on we, mushrooms? <laughs> <laughs> are you on a, some sort would of? Would you like to be on mushrooms? I would. Yeah. There are lounging mushrooms in the grotto, and you see huge oh, puppy mushrooms yeah. to sit <laughs> on. Oh, to sit on. It's for the best. I've never done them, so. Grandpa, Bob, I do do them. We're in a bit. We're worried about Ada. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and we'd we'd very much like to, as incredible as. 
this place this is. I'd like place. everyone to try and behold a drop of water just so you get what I'm okay. talking about. Okay. I thought we did. Okay. I guess, okay, I'll try, but then you gotta point me in the direction of the prison. What prison? Do you speak a tower? Let's well, it's a tower. What I? Uh, what a calethrial tower. A calethrial tower. The wind blows, and his long blonde tresses sway in the wind. Calethrial tower lies immediately to the north of these lands. <laughs> I didn't know that there was stuff going on with that. Well. Uh... I mean, I, I'm not sure, that, uh, at least, I don't know if there's a bunch of stuff going on, but this stuff that's particular to us going on there. Was, was it previously abandoned? Calethriel Tower is a place of mourning for the ancient widow Calethriel. Her husband sailed in great war against the humans of High Court, and he <laughs> da died. He how, died. How long ago did that happen? Five hundred years past. Okay. So, like, uh, oh, no. I'm so sorry. I try to comfort this old, old elf. Gorga goes and lays down in the van. There's <laughs> 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 a window crack. Hey, we know it's, it's like, north. Let's um, just go. Yeah. We should get some, Yeah, we need to rest. We should get some grapes. We should get yeah. some rest. I'm we fine not to not rest. Just put it out there. I'm fine to just, let's go I, get our girl. I'm I'm beat up, but I can take a short rest and be okay. I would, How is everybody? Else I mean, doing? I'm out of most things. I, I have didn't a, really I have a do level, anything last time. I have a time, level so. of exhaustion. From I'm transit. out of most things. Yeah. My hit points are pretty bad. I think I've got about one spell they left. They need they need Adine. They're not going to do anything to her right off. I can we just oh. maybe rest for the night and then or Come. some people? You shall be fed and brought to beds were elven sheets crafted by elven sheetsmiths in ages long past. Sheets? <laughs> Would you believe 80,000 thread count? Whoa. No. That's I, that sounds I, like I, sleeping I, on cream. More or where yeah. Is. Would you like to sleep on cream? Yeah, totally. I, I feel like we should, we've got, our friend is kidnapped. We shouldn't have too much fun. That's Do you have anything yeah. just like a hundred thread count? Just Whoa, all right. Like, yeah, I would, I'm morning. going to sleep in an 80,000 thread count. It says, to think you, you feel you cannot even spend one night in sleep for your death so fast approach. So just so you're the one who just made us feel bad about napping. What? <laughs> like, I just, I don't know. I'm gonna sleep on a mushroom. With this guy. <laughs> Or should we sleep I'm in the van? See, should we have Tracker do some sort of room? I still have like our sleeping bag. Yeah, situation. I'm gonna sleep in the van. Oh, I wanna well, sleep in we, the van. Is there yeah. any, oh, I, I'm just gonna take the sheets off of one of the beds <laughs> and bring them back to the van. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sleeping out on this. Regular bed rolls. Yeah, Tracker is like, you can bring as many of those sheets and I'll use them to make the moon hay. No! The ball, no! Do you guys have like a boyfriend pillow or anything like that? Like a body pillow. It's called a body pillow or a boyfriend pillow. Joy to rent. <laughs> Croy friend. What, which word are you trying to say? It's two words. <laughs> Georgia. It's Boy pillow. Boyfriend pillow. Georgia. Boyfriend pillow. Georgia. 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 I'm getting pissed. <laughs> Georgia. I'm getting pissed. This is my grandfather. All right. He's a nice guy. Hey, can I cut to his like Yeah. The, what's up? Your grandfather's pissing me off. <laughs> Georgia, you're being rude, all right? All right, all like, right. Just because my grandfather says so, words I'm stressed out, I'm sorry. I'm I, I don't, out. There's a lot they, going they, on. He's, he's, he's a lot. <laughs> he's really a lot. He's going oh, real slow. And oh, like everyone's so fast. excited to do my dad's snuff. All right, but then my my grandpa passes a couple of few weird words, and we're all like, "Fuck this guy." Can I okay. wasn't missing when we did your granddad's when you do your grandfather's snuff. No, my snuff papa's snuff. snuff. Your just papa's papa's snuff. snuff. Can uh, I cast a uh, or uh, detect good, evil and good? Sure. And start casting that. Uh, you cast that evil and good. You detect um, like sort of fa a lot of. Ambient fey slash celestial energy. There's not too many active fairies in Falinel. The elves would find fairies a little bit too chaotic. Mm -hmm. Their fairies are usually not mournful enough for these elves. Mm -hmm. um, but there's sort of a, a loose uh, fey slash celestial energy in the place. Not any actual otherworldly beings. Cool. Gorgog um, is going to put his headphones on. Cool. Because he sees all these people reacting to this music in such a way and wants to just, I don't know. Get some stuff out. Um, Rog sits next to you in the van as you do that and is basically like, 
place is a, this place is a trip, dude. This is wild. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. All these like dudes just running around eating grapes. It's so stupid. Oh, you Excuse love me? everyone Rag. here. Rag, do you Rag. love this place? No, I'm not. Shut up! Shut the fuck up! I don't fucking Go love this place. Go talk to someone. Hey, wow. Okay, no. thank you. And he <laughs> walks <laughs> off. Rob, Rob, Rob. Don't eat any grapes. Oh, I feel sorry, grapes. I'm sorry. Don't I'm eat sorry. any grapes. Don't eat grapes. Uh, can I? Talk he's to gonna me? come back, uh, and he's not gonna be horny anymore. Can I talk to the crystal in the van? Can I talk to the hangman? Sure. Man? You see, the hangman is like. Kristen Applebee's. Hey. A little one on one? Okay, yeah, what's up? Yeah, homie? What? Did you know we're in Fallonel right now? I heard of it. Yeah. About it. Similar vibe. Is this kind of your people or Um, you know, I feel like everyone's kind of partying, but they feel sort of sad about it. For me, I'm less like blossoms on the wind, like diaphanous white gowns, and I'm more like how about a couple of glass bottles of soda on the beach, our favorite tunes, and you know, like some kind of chill letterboard game, you know? Oh, cool. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, you yeah, I got I actually know exactly who you are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tracker looks over at you uh, and says, Hey, right when we were teleporting, you mentioned something about Sandra Lynn and Gardy. What's up? Um Well, are you done with the moon haven? Well, I, I should wait to cast until we're all ready to go to sleep, but yeah. Mm, yeah, um, yeah, we should talk one on, can we like just go talk? Yeah, you go talk one on one, yeah. Cool. Um, okay. Yeah, Sandra Lynn, I think, slept with Guardy. I think they were into them. What? Yeah. Wait, when did this happen? When we were there the first night, after the octopus, when I took the octopus's beer and I had no idea. <laughs> And I was trying to be cool, and I was leaning a lot. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. When did you find out? That night. That night, I went over there uh, with Riz, and we were, we were, at first, we weren't sure if she was, like, under a spell or something like that, because it seemed so unlike her. Isn't she the one with your dad that's, like, well, we uncle, have to Jabba, be closed? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, your uncle. I didn't... You knew about this last night? Yeah, like, honestly, I don't know, because I'm a little bit torn. She's like a woman trying to figure it out, and I think that there's a lot going on there, so I didn't feel like I wanted to like tell a whole bunch of people, I, even though I know it's really gonna affect you, but we didn't really have like a good like one-on-one -on -one time. You didn't want to tell a whole bunch of people? Yeah, yeah, no, but I just didn't want to tell you until I had even talked to her, and then when I tried to talk to her, she like totally was like, we're not talking about this. I feel like she should tell you. Uh, go ahead and make a charisma check with disadvantage. Oh, great. My charisma is not good. Did Ada come with us? Uh, Ida is Ida. with you. Yeah. Okay. No way! You can guess what that was. You can guess Who what that, that was, was double. Two, two now ones. ones. Wow. I was supporting a woman's right to choose and uh, trying to let her choose to tell you herself, babe. Um, <laughs> was that a mistake? Here's your shot. <laughs> Tell me the real reason why you didn't tell me. Your miss introspection and self-awareness, right? I'm not a lot of people. Yeah. I'm your girlfriend. Right. So why didn't you mention something to me and give me the real answer? I, I really think I, just so much was happening. I wasn't thinking to like let you know. <laughs> She uh, turns and walks off into the darkness. Wait, was there another reason? Crystal, what just happened? I don't know, but I told Tracker about your mom. She was really upset that I didn't tell her earlier. Why? That's my mom's business. It's kind of, that's what I was thinking too, but I do get that maybe, yeah, Tracker might be really protective over Java, which I would understand. 
I just felt kind of like not my family, and I don't need to like poke my head into the family and I mix think things that's up. Fair. But I don't know. I guess I mean I, it's I I could understand being really like upset about this. Hey, I think that I honestly assumed that you told Tracker because she's your girlfriend, and yeah. but I think it's kind of cool that if you protected my mom's, you know, whatever was going on with her, yeah. what is going on. There's kind of like no right answer to that, but I do feel like if I had to write a list of people that are important to me, Tracker would be ahead of your mom on it. But that's not, that doesn't mean that's who you tell things to. Yeah, true, true. Wait, I, can I go try to talk to Sandra Lynn? Sure, absolutely. You go find Sandra Lynn. You see that Sandra Lynn is, uh, is like landed with Baxter. As you approach, she looks over and says, Hey, Kristen, um, I just did a little loop up there. Calethriel's very close. We, it's, it's probably only uh, walking distance, probably a four or five hour hike north of here. So, cool. Um, um, so I want to let you know something. I want to be really straightforward. I'm not being very good with words today. Um, but Tracker asked what happened between you and Guardy. Told him that you and Guardy had a night. Tracker was very upset that I didn't share that with her before and now I feel like I fucked up but just so you know it's out there and maybe you should talk to her honestly maybe you should talk to me because I don't totally know what happened either do you still have whiskey on you <laughs> thank you oh hell yeah it's back <laughs> it's back <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> um, she snatches it back out of your hand. Um. Uh, <laughs> Dancing. I got. She says I got. Uh, I got drunk and made some stupid decisions. You're speaking my language. You pour beer out of beer cans and drink seltzer out of. Yeah, uh, that was that was the old me. The new me gets drunk real fast because I'm not used to alcohol in my body. <laughs> okay, you have to go to the van. Oh, what? You see, <laughs> she takes you over. Um, Galir uh, is is near. Actually, I have a question. I so talking to Kristen about this. I remember I have this memory that when I was watching the situation, obviously when I was watching, I was mostly just like, "Holy shit, my mom is flirting. That's crazy." But I have this memory that. At one point, she said something, and it looked like it changed the mood, but then the mood went back to normal or something like that. Is that. Am I misremembering that? Can you be a little more clear about what you're trying to remember? I feel like there was a moment where it's like, like it was like Sandra Lynn said something, and it like made the mood shift in a bad direction, like a hostile direction, and then something happened. Someone touched someone's elbow. I thought and she it was, just flirted with him. And oh, so she was strong, just like good, flirted with really good flirting. Okay, okay. Yeah. Then I don't. Um, uh, so you see Galir is near you and looks off, looks up at uh, Sandra Lynn and looks over at you and says, Figuroth, my daughter, pretty cool digs, right? This is the way to live. Hi, elves. They're so, they're so high. Yeah, they really do it right. Do you want to live in a place like this? I would ruin it. I know that about myself. That is such a deeply sad thing to say, Galir. You want to ruin it? Honestly, you're thriving here. He d unbuttons the top button of his short sleeve button up. Time to let loose. <laughs> yes, Galir. I may, right. I may go get a grape. Yes, Galir, pop them grapes. Oh! Pop a grape, Galir. It's probably fine if Galir has a grape. Fine. I mean, uh, how much? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you see, uh, Galir, uh, um, so he says, "What was the?" Uh, I wanted to ask you, daughter. Is there? Um, I observed a strange interaction, my insight into the workings of the heart alerted me to a strange presence between your mother, Sandra Lynn, and our benefactor, Gauti O'Brien. Yeah. Are you aware of any such hanky-panky? <laughs> 
<laughs> um, all I'm gonna say, Galir, is that if anything, what may or may not have happened there is a testament that what she did to you, you know, was maybe a pattern in her and had nothing to do with a failing on your part. Galir nods. Your mother, I don't need to make excuses on her behalf. Um, or, you know, defend what she did. She's been very hurtful to me through her actions. Do you ever wonder You know your mother graduated Eggforge, right? When she was a younger woman. Yeah. Do you ever wonder what happened to her adventuring party? Mm, no, actually, I hadn't really. The reason she took her job as just a member of the sort of Salesian Rangers, she was promising for much more beyond that for quite some time. Um, uh, she was taken as a replacement member for an adventuring party that was actually already active in the world. Her senior year, she actually dropped out and got her diploma after the fact to join an adventuring party. Um, I don't know everything, your mother's been very private about it, but there was a married couple within that adventuring party and they were older and more powerful adventurers. And my understanding is that as a very young woman, fresh out of adventuring school, she fell in love with a member of that wedded union who did not treat her very kindly. And when everything came out, she was ejected from that adventuring party and her future as an adventurer was dimmed. Um, I don't know that Her that name got smeared because of what happened? Smeared enough. Adventuring parties are formed often at Eggfort, and no one wanted her as a replacement, and the person that had been her romantic partner that had been unfaithful in that group took great pains to smear her name so that no one else would accept her. Do you know who it was? I Have do. you heard? Who was it? He nods and says, another time. No. It's, he says, it's your mother's information, not mine. I wanted to All tell right. you, I wanted to tell you what I knew. Not to forgive, but only to say that uh, Sandra Lynn has always been impulsive and guided by her heart, but uh, uh, Maybe they're unrelated. Maybe she has done wrong by people and has also been wronged and one doesn't excuse the other. But there is a fuller picture to understanding your mother, I think. I absolutely agree. I was mostly trying to protect your feelings. I don't know how it feels for you to see her do what she did to you to someone else. Honestly, perhaps this is fucked up. No, get a little fucked up. Come on, Pops. It makes me feel like it wasn't something uniquely wrong with me. That's exactly what I was saying. Maybe a tiny little W for Galir. Not a big one. No, no, cap, caps lock. No, caps lock that's a lowercase w. w for caps Galir. Caps lock on that W. Get um, a couple <laughs> grapes in you <laughs> and that'll be a cap. Yeah. To like pick a bunch of flowers, but then hide them in a pocket or something and find Trekker? Uh, go ahead and make a survival check for Oh, that's okay. Yeah, 17. Um, you uh, follow out into the woods. Um, uh, you see resting in the, on the grass uh, in wolf form is Tracker, who's just, and has like got her paws over her nose. And she does that thing that dogs do when they're like sulking, where she just glares at you and doesn't move as you approach. 
I I wanted to come say I'm sorry. I'm yeah, you're so important to me and this had to do with your family. I'm really sorry. I should have told you immediately. I should have told you that night. Uh, go ahead and make another persuasion check if you'd be so kind. Just normal? Just normal at right. advantage. That one. Throw it away. No way. <laughs> it's not just me. Allie is the coolest role I've ever <laughs> Jesus with. fucking Christ. Um, uh, you see. Uh, <laughs> um,. Tracker transforms into her uh, humanoid self. She walks up to you, um, and you can see that her eyes tear up as she looks at you. I think you didn't tell me because you didn't know the right way to do it and it would be a hard conversation. Totally right. Totally right, yeah. That sucks. I know, I'm so sorry. It's just, it's so, so many moving parts in your family. Part of me kind of psychotically thought that since Jawbone is like, very open that maybe he wouldn't care about this, but of course he would because she is so closed about this. It's so hypocritical. Yeah. I... Jawbone's a whole other... Look, Jawbone's gonna be fine. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I have to, like, talk to him or Sandra Lynn or somebody. That's a whole other... Look, grown-ups and their relationships aren't our business and I do understand that like it sucks it's weird I don't want to have that conversation with Jawbone I don't feel comfortable going to Sandra Lynn and talking about it but Kristen like it just really sucks it really hurts yeah totally I feel like you obsess over like what the right thing is and you kind of like in this obsessing over the right thing all the time if it leads you to inaction where you're like i don't have a good option so you just like stall or delay or don't do something that's also a wrong choice yeah i think you're right i love you I'd like to you these flowers. I was gonna give them to you when we were fully made up, but it's like, that's probably not gonna happen, so here's this while we're still in a fight. While we're still in a fight. <laughs> Just here, I picked these flowers, they're gonna wilt in my pocket. And when we made up? I was thinking I would come over and, and just really woo you with my heartfelt apology, but it didn't go that way. And I understand, I mean, it's not its not that easy. Well, if it's so inevitable that we're gonna make up, why don't you just hang tight and I'll let you know when it happens. <laughs> yeah. um, and she throws the flowers on the ground. No! And walks towards the van. I pick up the freaking flowers! <laughs> They're really good, I pick the best of each bush. Oh! Well I that, pick the best of each bush! Well that's as good as mind control, Kristen. I'm <sighs> so over it. Um, and she walks off towards the van. Uh, Obviously, follow her. <laughs> you follow but her. But at a distance. You, at can have your, you can have your storming yeah. way. You can have it. <laughs> um, uh, uh, awesome. Um, who all is like in the van getting ready for bed right now? Riz. Probably be uh, in there. On my way. Um, I have two I, levels of exhaustion and pneumonia. Yeah. <laughs> I get the sheets and I head back. Um, uh, give me. Sweat out um, <laughs> wrap in milk. Uh, um, Brain go ahead and give me. A uh, constitution saving throw, if you'd be so kind. Great. Uh, eight. Cool. Um, it's with your, they bought me a new dice and I rolled with it and I'm still doing okay. <laughs> eight is better. Eight is better. No, you rolled eight a three. Is, he has a high con yeah. modifier. 
Um, uh, you see that um, these hands, baby. Uh, these hands. Are We're gonna get you new hands for Christmas. So, um, your grandfather Telemine approaches and says, "My sweet grandson, oh, Grandpapa, do you wish for me to seek healing for your illness? There should be no disease within Tile Menura." Um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd appreciate being uh, healed. That'd be, that'd be lovely. Um, you see, he beckons uh, to one of your aunts who oh. approaches. Um, this is your aunt, Van Leriel. Um, <coughs> she approaches and says, My nephew, Fabian. Hello, aunt. Uh, what is it? I'm sorry, what Van is it? Van Leriel. Van Leriel. Nice, nice to meet you. The illness grips your body. Yes. Disease should not come to these shores. I shall banish it henceforth. <laughs> how is that to you? How do you feel about that? I think I'm still pretty sick. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <still, laughs> Weird, okay. Let me. Is it? <laughs> is it just the song? Is it just the song, or is there going to be a? Just the song. Is it going to be? She like speaks in Elven Drift, has a telemine. We have never seen an illness of this strength before in Kyle of Menura. I, 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 I've gotten this sick. Well, I've never gotten this sick before, but I've seen people get this sick before. This. You see, your aunt says, "I must use my greatest song of all." You know, you don't have to. Ah! I'm so Get in the van! <laughs> Hold on, they're doing elven healing. Um, How's it working? I have failed, and I shall fade. Your aunt looks up into the sky, turns no, into starlight, don't, no, 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 and vanishes. Come back! Telemine looks and says, I think I've seen her do that before, so we should be. She'll come back? Sure. Right. I'm sorry that we're not meeting under circumstances where I could spend time with you. Uh, you seem great and like an interesting person. In another life, I would have kept you here until the icy fangs of death came and wrested you from my arms. What horror that would have been to witness. Perhaps it is best that your human father took my daughter away and that you should grow up in those wild lands beyond these shores. My darling grandson. Can I get those sheets? Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and you see, he uh, comes back with sheets. You see, he says, is it normal that you're missing an eye out of your head? Oh, no. This, I got, it got cut out in a fight. It's I could speak and send word no. on the wings of a white dove. There is an elf that lives in the high mountains at the heart of Farinel who crafts eyes from songs and whispers and beams of moonlight, jeweled edges of the blue of the sea, shimmering poems pulled from the ether itself. If you like, you know, like a real, like a like an eye, like an eye, like a real. As real as song and whispers. Sure, I'll take a, I'll <laughs> take an eye. <laughs> just don't. You promise me you won't turn into stardust and disappear. <laughs> as you wish. You see, he turns into silver sand and floats no! away on the wind. <laughs> Wait, before he goes, I just put it together. This is Galir's future father-in-law. <laughs> you see the sand comes back and goes, what? <laughs> I just realized, hello, I am fake. Um, we met earlier. I put cigarettes on your ground. <laughs> My dad is dating your daughter. You, you are also the child of William Seacaster? No, no, uh, 
Galeer, who is the man who's... <laughs> See, Galeer comes back in. He has one more button done, and he comes over, and he's got a huge silver terrine of cream with floating berries in it. And you see, he's like, this is the most similar thing I could find to yogurt. It's like a clotted cream. It's like a sweet clotted, it's like a butter, a kind of a sweet butter. Galeer, this is your girlfriend's dad. You see, he looks over and goes, right, daughter, did you bring that up? I was kind of gonna slow roll that. <laughs> oh, yeah, he doesn't know yet. You He's see, none the wiser. He puts down the terrine and a big gob splashes onto his shirt and a little on his face. And he walks over and says, Telemain lumenelda of Kailo Minura. I, Galeophaeus, am uh, involved romantically with your daughter, Haleriel. We are not, um, I, it's unclear to, she is definitely my partner and I sleep in her garage. You see, Telemine squints his eyes and goes, Gargage. And you see, he says, garage. This is going really He can't well. pronounce the G sound, so I don't understand what's going on over here. You, you, see, you see, he says, if you, a wood elf, are to marry my daughter, let us walk in the midnight orchards and recite our favorite poems to one another. Oh my God. And you see Galeer goes and goes, chit, chit. Um, and, <laughs> and walks off with Telemine. And you see Telemine says, where lands the evening swan of dusk, the midlight blossoms bloom and grow, and peaks of mountains far away descend on crystal glint of snow. And wheresoever songs are sung, and elven magic fills the air, Kalai thrandil thertha thatha. A prayer, I whisper now, a prayer. And you see that Galeer goes, um, How much wood <laughs> could a wood chuck chuck? And he <laughs> walks off into the orchard with Telemine. Um, can I, can I talk to you know, I do have one second level spell left. Can I use can I use Phantasmal Force just to like make it make um make Galeer look a, like a little more just like make him look hot. Cool. Uh, you make him look hot. Or even if I have to use the entire second level spell to just hide the yogurt stain on his shirt. It will take the whole spell to hide <laughs> the yogurt stain, so he is stainless as he walks off into the night. Okay. Um, um yes. Can I talk to Ida real fast? Yeah, Ida has been in the van the whole time. She looks over at you and says, what is it? Hey, um, I feel like I've overheard like 30 sad conversations already, but do you have the sending spell as well? Hold on one second. Uh, you know, I actually think there's a chance she would have prepared it. I'm gonna roll an open luck check in front of the board. We're gonna call it even odds. 11 or higher, she's got it prepared. 10 or lower, she does not. Okay. 12. Hey. hey. That's all it takes. Awesome. Um, uh, you see, um, she looks and says, I do, why? So um, I just kind of have to send my girlfriend a message. Uh, there's been a lot of crazy stuff happening and I feel like I've done a bad job of communicating with her. Um, and I just wanted to let her know where we are and that we're safe and that I'm trying to figure that out. Um, you see that uh, she looks and says, you've done a bad job? Yeah, I was trying to, well, I told her that I would get this like cell tower figured out before we left and then I just let it fall uh, to the wayside when a bunch of other stuff happened. Why? But, well, there was a mo I. I just feel like. Why? I guess I just didn't prioritize it, and I didn't think about it as well as I could have. Hmm. My friends were kind of in danger, and I'm not exactly an organized guy, and I kind of forgot until it was too late. Wizards of the ancient past committed many such errors. Oversights, moments of hubris. They paid for it dearly, trapped in crystal caves. 
sent amongst the stars, destroyed or unmade. How have you paid for this crime? How have I, well, she seems kind of mad at me. Last time we talked, she was just cutting out on the crystal and she said, mm -hmm. she was like, you said you're gonna put the tower on. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that, that was pretty bad. I've been feeling That's pretty, terrifying. I've been feeling pretty bad since then. If people are mad at me about something that I've done, mm -hmm. that's terrifying to me. Yeah, I don't like it either. I can't be in there, in the room, when that happens. When people are mad at you? No. Okay. Yeah, I don't like it either. Are you like mad it. at me right now? I'm not mad at you. Okay. I think you're doing a good job. Thank and you. I appreciate it. I think you're doing a good job as well. Though awesome. You've just admitted a great failing to me. Yeah, yeah. What I've seen you do has been good. Oh, good. Obviously, the failures have been kept from me, hidden. Well, I don't know if I was hiding them from you specifically. I didn't see them, and I see a lot. Sure, okay. Well, I'm, do you, can I use that spell, or? Can you? Can, well, I, I know I'm gonna be the greatest wizard of all time, but for now, I don't know how to do it. You're asking me to do it for you? Yeah, could I She leaps forward and pins you to the ground with her yeah. talon and puts a finger in your face and says, do you remain now in my debt, Gorgug Thistlespring, Wizard of Solace? Could I just like pay you some gold? 150 gold. <sighs> yeah, sure. Great. I give her 150 gold. Uh, she casts Ascending Spell. What does Gorgug say? You got 25 words. Uh, curse is not uh, included. Oh yeah, definitely cuss her out. Call her the B word. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can you say it. With some real way. Yeah. She promises. <laughs> um, I think Orgosha says, "Shit, I'm sorry. Uh, I fully should have set up." Hold on. You take a second to think of that. As you do, uh, Tracker makes the Moon Haven. Um, and uh, Kristen, she looks over at you and says, um, maybe we crash in separate places tonight. I understand. Um, and I she... get some cream. <laughs> you get some, I get some cream creamy from, sheets. From uh, from whose Fabian. other room do you kind of go into? Fucking Galeer. <laughs> Galeer is like, um, Maybe not mine. Oh no, Galir is, oh, yeah, or Galir is actually out with Telemine oh, yeah, right now. I take Galir's bed. You take Galir's bed? <laughs> I write a quick note so when he comes in late at night, oh, it says, oops, sorry. Sorry, actually, as you go to Galir's room, you see there's already two people in here. You walk in and Rog is in there, and there is this young, like, wow. lithe elven lad who's like, looks like about like 17, 18, who looks up to you, Rag goes, oh, uh, this is my buddy. Uh, uh, hold on a second. He looks and says, um, this is my pal of Fethrethriel. Fethrethriel. Uh, uh, can I do a quick perception check on? Sure. Fethrethriel? Yeah. Hey, uh, here we go. That's a 12. Blonde, like, mop of hair kind of covering one eye. Is he trying to kill Rog? What would you roll for your insight? 14. You don't know trying to kill. He looks at you and says, I am Fethrethriel. Uh, you see, Rog says, yeah, Fethrethriel's actually, it's cool because I was talking to him about Blood Rush and like sports, and Fethrethriel uh, bakes elven whey bread. So that's sort of like something we have in common. Yeah, you have so much in common. Okay, close the door. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'll leave you to it. Um, you okay, see, just... Feth Fethrethriel calls out and says, do you want some elven whey bread? <laughs> uh, no, thank you. Are, are, is Rog eating it? Uh, you see, he looks up and says, I don't know, he's a hungry boy. And you see Rog goes, oh, you're this fucking guy. I'll see you. I'll see yeah, you, okay. absolutely. Um, and <laughs> you see you walk away. Um, uh, as you head off, um, uh, Oh, I, I guess I take Adine's bed. Ad oh, Adine, oh, you take Adine's bed, that makes sense. Um, you go crash in Adine's bed. Um, it's so neat. So neat in here. <laughs> um, uh, speaking of Adine, while Zach is still putting his sending together, we're actually <laughs> going to cut over, uh, not too far, just a few leagues away, mm -hmm. over <laughs> to Calethriel Tower. Brandon, I got you a little Christmas present. You did? I did. Oh, wow. Oh my god. What is? I don't. I didn't know anything about this for real. 
Oh my god, it's, it's waiting to die for not once. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Sugar and dice, edible dice! Yeah, so you could eat your fucking dice, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make you eat your goddamn dice. Truly incredible. And so cool. uh, if I get whomped, I will. Great. Um, uh, <laughs> incredible. My god, that is amazing. That's wow. so cool. Uh, uh, sugar and dice. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, I will always win. Um, <laughs> you can win at D and D. You can win at D and D. Um, uh, high atop Calethrial Tower, um, spinning in uh, a giant floating orb. It is extremely soft. It does not hurt you to be moved around it. And in fact, there are places where you can kind of. Uh, like slide with the orb for a moment as mm -hmm. it's moving. So you're never injured, you just cannot be still in here. Um, mm -hmm. As it slowly rotates, um, you see that Boggy is there with you, um, who has his not so sure about this face on. Um, but you see that he ribbits softly under your arm as you kind of move around the space. Um, can I cast spells in here? What's uh, you can. You absolutely can. Cast Will spells. they get out of the orb? Um, you believe that there might be a like a magic circle that's like preventing you from doing stuff in here. Mm -hmm. But you basically, the elves believe that you've like run out of spell slots and you're not going to be able to trance in here. Uh -huh. um, so uh, uh, at the moment, um, you are unguarded. It's but like, give me an Arcana check to see if there's any kind of like Great. spell stuff happening. A 10. Um, there might be some shenanigans in here. It's hard to say. Mm -hmm. you, what you notice that bums you out is there are a lot of like artifacts in here. The walls are kind of glowing with runes. Mm -hmm. There is something pumping through this place that looks like raw elemental power. One of the things that you know about is that permanent, ma like one of the hardest things to do with magic is have a permanent effect. Right. It's really hard to make something last forever. Um, but there do seem to be a lot of permanent magical effects here. And as you're looking at it, it's very clear that whatever wizards or artificers crafted this stuff didn't want to burn their own internal resources. Like the equivalent, you know, in world, you guys wouldn't know what experience points are, but life energy or whatever, mm -hmm. these wizards didn't want to expend that. So there appears to be something like pumping through this place. And so you're like, oh, they might be able to do some real wacky shenanigans with like prepared directional counter spells or whatever, mm -hmm. um, uh, and have it be powered by some force that you can't glean on a 10. You're not really sure what it is. Mm -hmm. um, but you think, like, obviously they, they seem, they, you don't think that they would have prepared to be to counter cantrips, which they know you'd be able to cast because you would never run out of cantrips. Right. They're, you know, they're not based on spell slots. Um, well, uh, hmm. God, there's so little I can do. Can I cast Detect Magic? It's a ritual spell. Yeah. And I'm, identify? Uh, um, unfortunately, um, your jacket and spell book and stuff has not been left in here with you. Oh. So you're kind of, it's like you and Boggy basically are uh -huh. in here. And, uh, you know, other than that, um, uh, there is not that much, so you can't ritual cast any of your higher level spells. Okay. Um, well, I had a short rest, so I have one third level spell. Okay. Can I cast counter spell towards something? Sure. Or I guess dispel, I have dispel magic. Can I cast dispel? Oh, I don't have my, I have it as a prepared spell, is that? Yeah, absolutely. You have dispel magic. Uh, if you want to attempt to uh, uh, like nix this orb out, mm -hmm. um, you would at least have like a little bit of time to be able to do that. Um, uh, dispel magic. Uh, the DC equals 10 plus the spell's level for each. Um, uh, okay, so you're gonna roll a D20 plus your intelligence modifier. The DC you're trying to hit is a 15. Got a 19. Yeah. Hell yeah. So uh, you managed to get back one spell slot. They didn't know it was there. The orb boom, vanishes. As it vanishes, a few like um, 
counter spells kind of ring off for a second, um, and an alarm immediately goes off. So you know that, that they know you're here. Okay, great. Um, uh, I am, there's a, a window? There is a window, yes. Is it, how high up am I? You're probably about 160 feet up. <sighs> okay. Um, and do I have any idea where it was that my spell book was left? Uh, it was taken away to another place in the tower. Dang. Okay. Um, can I then just like look for a place to hide? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, you see also mm -hmm. Boggy looks at you mm -hmm. and looks out the window uh -huh. and you see that Boggy can turn into mist and might be able to make a run for it to like uh, have your friends be able to know where you are. Mm, I think that there's actually rules against that. Oh, there are? I, Do you have like I message hate, or something? I hate to uh, kill myself. And maybe I'm wrong, but I think that find familiar only, they have to be within a certain distance from you. Um, I don't have the sp full spell on this spell card, I'm sorry. Uh, no, it can go farther away, but you lose the ability to communicate telepathically when it's beyond 100 feet. Oh, okay, that's what i that's what it was. Okay, um, but I have no idea where my people are. Uh, you don't, so Boggy so, would just be heading off into the into Right, the exactly, and the chances of him finding them, I'm assuming that they're still in Solace. Or still in Leviathan, Or yeah. still in Leviathan, sorry. Yeah. So I think I'm going to keep him with me for now just because I think that that makes the most sense. I think that he can help me most. Cool. Here. Cool. Um, can I, here is, here is what, where I would like to hide if possible. Let me know if you think it's possible is I would, uh, like to go and see if I can hide in Aylwin's room. <coughs> I feel like it's just the least likely place for them to look for me. Sure, absolutely. Go ahead and give me a stealth check. Boggy can give you advantage on this. Great. <sighs> Rolled a two and a four, so I got a six. You run in there to hide. Mm -hmm. um, you rush in, Boggy's with you. You hear people coming up to the towers. Give me a perception check as you're running. Uh, 15. Um, as you run by these towers, you see down in the courtyard, remember when the courtyard, when you were trying to make your escape and mm -hmm. like <coughs> mages kind of appeared out of nowhere? Yeah. Um, you see them step out of doorways that don't have doors in them mm -hmm. and are built into the stone of the wall. And as they trigger, you see the runes in these elven archways are the same that you saw in the protections around your orb upstairs. Mm -hmm. As they <clears throat> appear, you see it's the same thing where it's like, oh, this place doesn't have like dozens of elven mages guarding you, but the second anything happens, a bunch of elven mages appear through these doorways. Um, uh, you see that, boom, they come through. Um, you go into Aelwyn's room. Um, I'm gonna make a little search check. Cool. Um, you go in there, hide behind a corner. Um, Aelwyn's long blonde hair is like matted. Uh, her face looks dry and desiccated. Her lips are completely colorless and chapped. Mm -hmm. um, she is like crawling on hands and knees. You can see that clearly she sh ha is at like five points of exhaustion and only magic is keeping her from going to the sixth and dying. Mm -hmm. um, uh, she moves through uh, to you, um, and uh, this uh, your role is low enough that she sees you come in and sees you hide. Um, she moves through. You see that in there's a rush people to your room. You see these tall, they almost look like green men, where they have like leaves coming from their faces. They're about like eight feet tall, and you immediately see that these are clearly spell crafted, like mage craft automata. Uh, not mechanical though, made of pure magic, but almost like elemental plant-based things. Mm -hmm. Soldiers rush in towards your chambers. You see the young maiden here um, looks up um, and 
communicates uh, something sort of telepathically to Eowyn. And you can almost hear the message cantrip going back and forth between them. Mm -hmm. um, you see Kier basically says, uh, where did she go? Um, and you see that Eowyn responds and says, uh, she doesn't look at you to make that motion. Uh, she looks and uh, her response to the message cantrip is, however should I know, I see nothing. Um, and Kier moves to investigate your quarters. Um, Eowyn uh, makes eye contact with you um, and uh, casts a message cantrip. Um, she looks at you and says, do you have any spell slots left? Anything to get out? I have four first level spell slots. No spell book. And a frog. It's an all right frog. <laughs> I cast out so it is laughter. I don't. I don't really do that. <laughs> I don't <laughs> waste one of my four spell slots. Um. Can you message us? Uh, it's only 120 feet and you have to, it's within, you have to see the person to. Um, she looks at you and says, um, anything dangerous like a spell book or something like that would have been left in the vault on the first floor. It'll be locked down by now. The alarm will have triggered it. The vault it will be one of the first things that has to go. Do you have, does anyone know you're here? They know that I was taken. I don't know if they know that I'm here. I only had one spell and I, I, I used it to get rid of my orb. Maybe I should have told my friends, I don't know. Did mother find you? Briefly. She looks at you for a long time, shaking under the effort of continual movement. It's rather hard to gather one's thoughts in here. Mm -hmm. um, Eowyn, nobody deserves this. This is wrong. What you did is wrong, but what they've done to you is barbaric. Uh, the, what limited moisture is left in her body forms tears in her eyes. Uh, she looks at you and says, Adan, I'm very sorry. I hardly remember anything anymore. I know that I've behaved dreadfully and not... I know I behaved dreadfully to the world and I know I behaved dreadfully to you. And that was barbaric and undeserved. I am very sorry that our... I feel a very broken person that it took months of torture to make me exposed enough to say what I always should have said and didn't have the strength to. There's no apology that makes any of it all right. And the truth is that I feel so strange and addled that I can't even give you a better apology because I don't remember at this point what's real and what's imagined. I think our parents, I used to think that them treating you as an untouchable favorite and me who could never do anything right, I thought that I was the only one that they were damaging, but I, I think that they damaged you too. I think that that's as damaging. They're bad people, both of them. Um, you see that she shivers a little bit and says, well, I think in certain ways they tried the best they could, didn't they? No, I don't think they did. I don't really remember. I, I, they expected quite a lot of us, but isn't that what, isn't that 
Didn't that make us great? Expectation without love. What's that? You... Um, you watch her kind of go. Right. Sorry, how did this conversation begin? Are you here to get me out or no? Yes, I'm here to get you out. Oh. But I can't get you out yet because I'm out of spells. All right. Well, how many spell slots do you have? I have four first level spell slots. All right, where's your spell book? I think it's in the vault on the first floor. The vault is on the first floor, that's right. Uh, and you see she starts to go over the first part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, can I hide in this room? Is there a closet or something that I can crawl into? Um, you see moments, a couple moments later, that these guards come in. There's about, you know, four of them, and Kier is here as well. Um, she waggles her finger at you, um, and uh, she takes you into the room again. Um, what you see as you walk back to your room, however, is mm -hmm. that your uh, room is not outside of the range of the message cantrip from Aelwyn's quarters. <sighs> Great. Um, you are placed back in the orb, um, and you, a few moments after the guards leave again, um, you hear a voice in your mind say, Hello? Elvin? Who's this? It's me, Adine. Adine, are you, are you here in the tower? Yes, I'm here to rescue you. Adine, you deserve an apology. Thank you, but we don't have time for that. Can, can, you, right. can you tell me everything that you know about the tower? The tower, tower that we're in. There's a vault on the first floor. That's where everything special is being kept. Adine, I'm scared. I am too. Um, your sister does her best to help you without being able to remember really what you've said or talked about to each other. Um, and we are going to move back <sighs> from Calethrial Tower uh, to, uh, uh, to Kylo Menura in the south. Um, you guys awake. The... Doesn't, he have a, doesn't he have a message? Oh, that's right. You have a message, I'm my friend. I'm watching him write it Scratch. and rewrite it. <laughs> Hold <laughs> on. Let's see. 25 here. words. It's not very Did you use words. your curses? Look, i got to say, you had some bad drafts and they got better. <laughs> <laughs> you got to just get the bad draft out. <laughs> okay, let's hear it. Let's hear it, George Judge. George Judge. Zelda. Safe in Falinel. Gonna finish Cell Tower soon. Sorry about everything, but hope your break is going well in spite of this. Miss you. 25 words. You didn't have miss you in the early drafts. Yes. Ah, that's a good one. Essential. That's a beautiful message, but it is also a message of like a handful of, a handful of words that you're, you're limited by the text there. So I'm gonna ask for a persuasion check with disadvantage. Okay. This goddamn game. To the sheet. <laughs> Persuasion. Uh -huh. Okay. But that's still Twelve. Cool. It's not less. Um. <laughs> Sad music still play. Yeah. <laughs> we just see red. Seems like you should change the music. <laughs> yeah. Why are oh, we yeah. playing? Listen like a fun rock and roll guitar. Ooh, Where's the like metal, my guy? Um. <laughs> um. Play sexy yeah, Marvin Gaye. Uh, cool. Uh, you wait for a while. I'm gonna say that in the van, both like probably like at different points because you have to like get out of the van to like use the bathroom in the night and stuff. So different points in the night. Actually, Fig, Fabian, Kristen, and Riz give me perception checks. Okay. Seventeen. Ooh, uh, twenty-five. Twenty-five. Four. Four. Nice. Cool. Uh, Kristen, in the middle of the night, you notice that a light is still on in Gorgug's. Hey, what's going on, man? We sh you should sleep. We gotta get our yeah, strength back. Yeah, I was trying to sleep. Um, just trying. Uh, yeah, I'm going to bed soon. 
Everything okay? Or just, I, I talked to Ida and I was able to send a message to Zelda and, um, and I think probably there's some kind of time difference situation. Um, Between so us and the red waist? Yeah, I don't know what the I don't know what the conversion is on I that. Think it's the same time zone. Not to mess with your gotcha. theory, but <laughs> Damn, Damn, right on, right on. <laughs> Kristen <laughs> eating it today. Oh, Give me a perception check with advantage real quick. Eating it. Uh fifteen. Um Kristen came out of Adine's room. <laughs> you how are you how are you doing? I'm not good. I'm kind of in the doghouse because I didn't tell Tracker about her dad getting cheated on. I just kind of sat on that like a old egg. <laughs> what? Specifically. Sometimes don't you feel like it's, I feel like a lot of times I am not good at saying the right thing and I feel like that makes me a slow bad communicator. And then I'm also just a little bit of a mess on top of that. And it makes me, and I think it was unfair to Zelda that I didn't do a good job of talking to her before this trip and during this trip. Yeah, yeah. Forgot to make a cell tower, but. That sucks, yeah. It made I got some cell sticks tower. together, like, <gasps> so like. You're almost, oh, you're almost to the structure of it. Yeah. Do you know a, how to make a cell tower? I don't think I do, <laughs> do I? Long? Do you're asking me if Kristen Applebee's knows how to make a cell Kristen, tower? Kristen, you don't happen to know how to make an entire I think cell I do. tower. Do you? <laughs> Let me take a crack at it. Cool. Go ahead and give me a uh, a wisdom proficiency check with uh, sorry, no, this would be intelligence proficiency check. Uh, or not proficiency, so just raw intelligence, disadvantage, go ahead and give me a roll. Hey, two fourteens. Cool. Fifteen. You, uh, you don't know how to. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe actually, you know how you have the base. Maybe we need to flip that up on top. So the base goes on top. So the the big pile of sticks at the bottom goes to the top. I've been getting oh. in a lot of trouble for saying the wrong thing, so maybe I shouldn't help you with this. Uh, you know, <sighs> crazy. Uh, but yeah, I'm just sleeping in Adine's room. So yeah. Well. I'm sorry. We should probably both get some sleep though, man. Like, okay. Do you know, I don't know anything about how this spell works, but will it wake me up? I don't know either, actually. Um, you don't know, how, wow, okay. Well. With message? It, sending, it would, well, cause you didn't send spell? it, right? It's Ida. Maybe it goes back to Ida? I think Ida? it would go back to Ida and then Ida would let you know. All right, I'll go to sleep in a sec. Yeah, it, but. Um, I think you're really great. You're a really great friend. You've never let me down. Thank you. So that's good. You've never let me down. Hey, think if someone is cheating on your mom or dad, I would tell you immediately Same. to your face. And if you asked me, or if you forgot, wait, no, if, if you asked me to build the cell tower, I would do it immediately, and I would know how. I love you, man. Love you too. <laughs> you give each other a big hug. Um, then I go back to Adine's room in my milk sheet. Cool. Uh, in your milk sheet. Yeah. How good are these sheets? Um, you go on these sheets. Um, these sheets uh, give all of you guys the benefit of a full long rest. Um, even though you failed your Constitution saves, these are going to give you an additional Constitution save with advantage. Oh, the yes. elven sheets made of cream silk. Uh, that'll be, uh, that'll be tw mod 20. Uh, your exhaustion is removed. Yes! Um, Woo! these sheets were forged in the silk forge of Elven time. Smiths um, and silk forges. Gorgeous. Um, 80,000 thread <laughs> count. It's gorgeous. Uh, great. Uh, with this lit rest, and I'm gonna say Adine gets this as well, even though you are not taking a long rest, um, all of you guys from the previous battle in Leviathan, um, uh, and I'm going to pump this up with uh, some role-playing awards as well, get uh, 3,500 experience points each. So we're level nine? 
I don't. We're at forty-four thousand one hundred. Uh, right? uh, let me go ahead and check that. I truly don't know at all. We okay. went from forty thousand six hundred plus thirty-five hundred. Uh, right. You guys, uh, how, how much XP do you guys have right now? Forty-four thousand one hundred. So it's forty-five thousand one hundred. Forty-four thousand. No, nine is forty-eight thousand. Hey, we're almost there. Can we get about 5,000 uh, more? <laughs> First I asked this before we start recording. Yeah. Can we just like beat each other up like back yeah, and forth? Yeah, can we fall? Oh, we're going to move right back. along. I take a big I swing at I have four first level spells, and I'm willing to use all I of them. Say, heal me and I'll um, do the same The following I morning, you guys awaken um, to a choir of all of the youths here in Kyla Manura singing and dancing under the morning light and doing kind of a, a strange dance yoga. Can I through. join them? Uh, yes, go what? ahead and give me an acrobatics check. Where's Rod? Henry is in prison. Uh, well, yeah, everyone's waking up. Uh, <laughs> uh, 20, mod 20. You do this beautiful, Whoa. Elven, uh, like dance yoga. You it know? makes you feel like good. It's like good. Maybe, maybe I'm not supposed to be a fighter. Maybe I'm supposed to be a yoga dancer. Oh no. You see, someone comes <laughs> up to you and says, Fabian, I am Trethrenren. Take this. It's a grape. I, I take it and pocket it. Uh, you see, he says, take this. Let me put it in your mouth. <laughs> No, no. I'm, With my hand. No, stop. stop. Hey, Fabian. <laughs> Give it to me. I'll eat it later. I'm going to go eat it. I have to go. My friend's in prison. All right? uh, you see that a number of like young elven youths like come over, lithe and dancing, just, like, reveling in their bodies, and have long diaphanous silk scarves, like 40, 50 foot scarves. Oh, I take one start, of those. And they yeah. see <laughs> you run up. Uh, they start to like dance around you and wrap you in the the wind blows this you're sort of like buffeted by scarves. Oh. You dance so beautifully. Oh, thank you. You dance fearlessly and bravely, unafraid of the death that awaits you. All right. Everyone needs to stop. You talking see about that. this like deep brown hair, like bright blue eyes, elven, like young elven woman touches your cheek and says, Would you dance with me? on this beautiful morning. Uh, if only for a quick moment, that I really have to go save my friend from prison. Um, for a quick moment, for a quick moment, that's all you have. I'm getting my coffee to go, being like, David, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Just one more dance. You see that uh, Telemine comes back, he's been walking all night with Galir. You see they round a corner in the Midnight Garden, and you see that uh, Galir looks and says, there once was a man from, from, uh, Bastion City. And you see that uh, um, Hellamine looks and says, What's your deal? My friend is kidnapped. Ah. And my other friends are just dancing and eating grapes. <laughs> have you had a grape? No. You have a harsh energy. I'm a harsh guy. What's that metal tube on your hip with a little handle on it? It's just the metal tube. I think it's beautiful. Then I do a dance. <laughs> I think it's beautiful and everything's Ray! fine here. Ray. Everything's fine and good, isn't it? <laughs> that look at the Fabian. Yes. Your friend's a little dick. <laughs> <laughs> He's just very Wait, no, so you very... know that word. Hmm? You get how you He's reminiscent <laughs> of a little dick. <laughs> You know, um, yes, honestly, I coming, like my grandpa. Coming back to George Ugg, uh, yeah, you, you see that the end part of it, right? Which is the same as the middle and the front part. Boded, sure. Brodic, 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 Brodic. We're gonna just starts running. Going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the uh, just, you guys, have, you guys just take off after the rest. You're heading north. Um, you, you see that Rog. <laughs> As you, guys, uh, as you guys head off, you see that Rog is uh, is over. I don't know if any of you guys, like the van has Galir, Sandra Lynn is in there. Uh, a tracker goes into wolf form to move through the forest. Um, Cathilda is like geared up for battle. You see the, at, sort of at the caboose, at the edge of Kailo Manura before you guys leave, Rog is talking to Fathrethriel. And, and you see that he's going like, oh man, I had 
such an incredible time. And you see that Pithrethiel has like a, one of like the ribbon scarves kind of around him and is like playfully moving it and stroking his arms. And Rog is kind of like trying to disentangle himself and looking around panicked like, oh, get someone. <laughs> um, it meant- Rog, come over here. Uh, so I have something to say to everyone actually. Um, you see, he says, Pithrethiel, I have to save one of my friends, but I will for sure be back. And it was awesome. Green skin like the boughs of a tree. Leafy, my leafy man. And you see that? <laughs> Ra goes, okay, don't talk about my skin. And he <laughs> runs off and just kind of gets away and says, whoo, what's up? Uh, All right, we gotta everyone, go. Yeah. Uh, we gotta yes. go. We gotta go. To I just have a little thing to say just to kind of gear us up. You know, uh, we've been through a lot. You know, we were on, we were on the Leviathan mm -hmm. and, um, you know, we got through everything there. There was a lot of crazy stuff that happened, you know, like, and, and we met, you know, Guardy and... It's gonna get uh, inspiring pretty soon. Yeah. And then they, yeah, it got kind of weird. I guess we don't want to get into that. Um, but yeah, some of us made some mistakes. <laughs> it feels um, more personal than inspiring. I guess, you know, this <laughs> isn't some sort of big yeah. you know, public apology, but, you know, Tracker, I am really sorry. <laughs> um, for guys, things that I won't get into here. No, um, this, is, this is brave. This I is just, inspiring. You know, um, I'm feeling inspired. And you know, yeah, sure. Uh, you know, Fabian got his ass handed to him uh, by a, a lot of people, but he was alone. So it's like, that's fine. That would have happened to me. We're all kind of weak, Can you know. You so uncomfortable that you get more hit points. <laughs> I just, yeah, you know, yeah. I messed and it feels up like once. Feels like that's about to happen. I Your body mess protects up again. itself and secretes hit points. I had a little whiskey <laughs> earlier because I was, you know, just chatting about something hard with like uh, Sandra Lynn. Sandra Lynn, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we might. That What's might your be, point, um, <laughs> so, uh, How did Kristen get so, a microphone from a wedding? Anyway, um, yeah, we went to college so together. The paper's and, uh, <laughs> anyway, what I'm trying to say is friendship is thicker than uh, water, and we need water to live. Let's Amen. go ahead on that. Yeah. 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 Yes. We need water to live. We, we need, need water, water to live. To live. We Let's need get out of here. Water to live. We need. Wonderful. So we all just got some temp hit points from that inspiring speech. Truly insane. How many did we get? How many is it? Eleven? Let's find out. Um, it's not a spell, it's an ability. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Good call. Level plus charisma. Hey, there we go. That's eleven. Sweet. Ooh. Cool. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you. Hey, so no much. problem. I can uh, recite that anytime. <laughs> you see? Um, you arrive at the edge of the lands where they, like, the illusion begins to fade. You see that, um, you see that uh, Telemine appears here at the edge of the land and goes, I hold her You back. have taken your leave so soon. I am sorry for how horny and stupid the youths of this place are. Yeah, stupid. I, I, I actually horny, agree. But... I kind of agree with you. This, your whole idea here, my friends are way too horny. Do you want a grape? I stole one. I don't want a grape. Okay. You see, he says, careful. Some of the grapes, when they are removed from Kylo Minura, turn into song. Oh. Turn into song. Can you reach into your pocket and see what happens? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, those are going to be bad for stealthing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if if anyone one. has a grape that they if stole, anyone... put it out of your pocket. Yeah. 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 I might have a choir. You do grapes too. Rog, do you have any grapes? I feel like that guy was giving ones. you grapes all night. He goes, he goes, yeah, I, yeah, I ate a lot of grapes. <laughs> what did it, so you're just gonna start gonna, singing when we He leave? burps and a musical <laughs> note comes out. <laughs> Remember Golden Horde? People poison us sometimes. They're I bad wasn't people. Gonna this eat is my them family, Riz. See, Telemine looks and says, My grandson, I have sent word to the fabled eye smiths of the far mountains. They now craft an eye for you, if you wish. How long will that take? Briefest moment. Like it'll be here now? Now does that mean no. a couple days oh, or like? For you, oh, he doesn't know uh, time. Yes, that's right. Okay. I don't know, a couple years, a hundred years. A <laughs> hundred <that? laughs> <laughs> The briefest moment is a hundred years. For my immortal elf. All right, life. thank you, Grandpapa. Let's go. 
Right. You see, he says, you go now to make war on Calethriel. I mean, no. hopefully not war. I mean, violence will be avoided if possible. You see, he says, violence is what awaits you if you descend on Calethriel. The moon doors of the elven folk will bring mages of the third ring, the court of stars upon that place, should you attack it. Enchanted men, oak warriors of the forest, will be summoned to their aid. It is a fool's errand for you to attack. What's, what are you smiling about? Not smiling about anything. I think this is all normal. Right, it's a fool's errand. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you have any tips or tricks? Do you have any, do yeah, you know any way to disenchant? We don't want to attack it. We, we just, want to, we just want to get our friend back. Should we tell these horrible teens that there's a party at the tower? Party at the moon tower? <laughs> the teens have been banished. <laughs> no teen jiger may exit from What'd Thailand. you say? What's that? Teen jiger. He said teen jiger. He's trying to say so, teen. Can I ask you a question, sir? Yes. Do you have the photo? Oh, yes. Do you see someone in this photo besides a smiling elf? A smiling elf? A goblin. A goblin. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm a human, guys. I'm sorry. Well, you don't know Whoa. all that. No, I know that you're a goblin. Um, okay. Give me a perception a check. Elf? <laughs> hey, 21. Uh, he hands it to you and says, I see only a strange painting of a goblin in an odd costume. You see the cat. Me? You. What? Can I make a perception check? Uh, and can look, I at, look it? at it? Yeah. You guys look at it. Oh, you guys don't need to make roll. You just want to look at the picture. Yeah, I'm but, look at the okay. picture. What do I see? I wasn't sure if um, there was a. You don't, um, you don't see it. It's when you um, lie about something. Sandra Lynn, Sandra Lynn lied, and the next day she could see Shadowcat, right? I, I'm Sandra looking at it and I don't see it. I never lied about Correct. anything, though. Okay. Well, you got in a fight hey, with. Uh, um, yeah. I think you're the tallest person I've ever seen. <laughs> You do not see <laughs> You guys, I see the cat, I see the fucking cat. Does that mean the cat touched me and now I can see her? Was she in Adine's bed? Was I spooning the cat all night in the milk? You, were you spooning you were anyone? spooning the cat I feel, all I can't, the, in the, the milk. The cream comforter was so soft, it felt like someone was spooning me. But it must be something that we do in our life. Because remember, Tracker started to be able to see. Fuck. Mm. Shadow cat. Tracker, I know we're in a fight, but can you please hug me? Trekker looks at you and gives you a hug. I can see Pats the you cat. on the back. I can see the cat. Okay. We can both see the cat now. We can both see the cat. Did you sleep it off? Are you still mad at me? Did I sleep? Fuck you! And she <laughs> removes you. This <laughs> is crazy! <laughs> Kristen, I know nothing about relationships, but I also know that was the worst thing you could have ever I said. Yes, that's that the was, fuck? That In was my insane. opinion, that was actually your first real mistake. That's crazy! <laughs> Did you sleep it up? Was yeah. not uh, good. You bad. see, uh, but Ida, Ida looks at you and says, <laughs> This is a bad time to bring this up, but I don't know when times are good to bring things up. I'd be you. We love you. However you want to be, we love you. Thank you. What do you have to say? I love you too. Is that normal? Sure. Okay. It should be. If good. it isn't, it should be. What's going on? Your message has been returned. <gasps> oh. Uh, you see that she relays Zelda's message. Uh, it says, uh, sorry was at a party um, you see, she says, That's um, manipulative. Use those 25 words to say that, come uh, on. You see, uh, she says, um, uh, you don't have to build a cell tower. That's crazy. It's all whatever, Gorgug. I don't blame you. She said your name right. Yeah, yeah, at least she said my name right. <laughs> Sounds like you're off the hook. See, Ida looks at you and says, why do you react to that first statement that way? Oh, because when people are in a relationship um, and they're not in the same place, sometimes it can make them feel insecure um, to find out that the other person was out having, like uh, socializing a bunch and being around a lot of people who could be um, potentially alluring to them. And so when you're limited to only 25 words- To use and you a use, bunch of them. Yeah, to use a mm -hmm. bunch of them to say, I was with a lot of other people who- She should have said that she was completely isolated. She should have just not mentioned it. I'm not saying mentioned. it was a choice to mention it. Of course. 
Maybe. Yes, yeah, much know. information has been left out. So social I, information is intentionally hurtful. I yeah. put my arm around Gorgug, kind of. Ida looks and says, this Zelda woman has hurt you, Gorgug. If you want, I can exact terrible vengeance. <laughs> That's actually, okay. It's actually, not. It's not like that. I think it's fine. Okay. I don't know what it's like. So just it's, thank you for putting bumpers up and letting me figure out. Sure. Thank Ida, you. Do you know plane shift? I'm afraid I don't know the plane shift spell, but I am powerful enough to research it. Will you? Oh yeah, right. Will um, you? I would have to return to the compass points in Leviathan. Perhaps after we rescue my friend Adine, my best friend. Is right. that strange? No. Have I made no. myself vulnerable? That's awesome, but she's also kind of my best friend. It's good to be vulnerable. Yeah. But and the transitive way. property, are we best friends? Yeah. Yeah, you know what? That's a nice way to take it. Fantastic. <laughs> I grow richer by the day. I'm emotional. <laughs> she starts crying. <laughs> I'm emotional. <laughs> Fire's rolling on her face. I'm gonna fly away, and you see she flies <laughs> off. Oh, no. um, Wait, what? What? <laughs> what do we need to do to get into this town? Uh, yeah. Wait a second. What? The elf that was with Rog last night. Uh -huh. That's someone that you interacted that the rest of us didn't interact with. Mm -hmm. Felfethrio? Rog's Felfeth always been able to and see. Um, I don't able. know if we should go back and talk to Fethrethrio. No, 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 I don't want, I'm okay? not talking about going back. What yeah. happened? Yeah, what, what happened? Was it good or was it can weird? I, can I do an inside check on Rog? It was Me probably too. good, but he just 17. doesn't want the uh, drama. Well, um. Sounds like your personalities didn't really jive. No, I'm not the type of dude who would like bang somebody that I had fucking nothing in common with. Like when we were talking, he was like, uh, I don't know, it's just there's some stuff he said. Like he kind of like made a lot of comments about me being big and like beefy, which was hot in the moment. And then it sort of kept happening. I was sort of like, what do you do? And he was like, your legs are like the mighty trunks of trees. And I was like, we can just, we already, okay. you know, we bang. We don't, we can yeah. just, just truly chat. Sort of like once you're finished, it's kind of like, don't touch me for a little bit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? I kind of, I actually punched one of the seats in the van pretty hard. <laughs> uh, it's wild. Because like, I didn't really know that if you do, if you do finish, you like, it's like, get off of me! Yeah. You know, like. <laughs> it was not that, it was yeah. okay. I was that. Um, get was, away from me! Yeah, I kind of raged. I raged okay. right at the end there, and I punched one of the van seats, and he got into it in a way that made me feel right. self-conscious, and I punched, and I was like, get off of me! Yeah. Um, cool. So no shadow magic or anything, just no talking about magic. your true trunk. Uh, the only shadow magic here is, Chaboy lost his V card. Who? Grow! Who? Grow! Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I didn't know that you were a virgin. That's great, man. Yeah, not anymore, Sayonara. So, yeah, he, he was su a super nice, chill dude who is maybe led like a sheltered life and has not met like half works before. Um, mm -hmm. And also just like afterwards, he, he, he like when we were lying in bed, he like sang a lot. I could see that happening. I you know what I mean? I feel like an asshole. Thing. I'm an asshole. I'm like judging someone that I was intimate with. No, yeah. Um, it's just like, don't sing. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not an asshole. I'm no, an asshole. No, don't sing okay. in bed. Yeah. You're you're allowed to, there's a lot you're of singing going on. There's a, these, everyone's a lot. Yeah, yeah. this place yeah. is like, it's like, what if every, yeah. Yeah. No good. We gotta rescue Anna. How <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do I see the cat all of a sudden? I, really I don't know. Don't I don't know that I'm we're like, gonna figure we'll it figure out. Figure it out another yeah. another time. Um, I, it's not my mind as well. Uh, uh, Splendid. Um, you see that Telemine looks at you as you guys are, are prepared to leave. Ida calms down and flies back. Um, you see that um, Telemine says uh, says Calethrio is defended magically from all forms of arcane spellcraft. It will be, any wizard or sorcerer would be hard pressed to find their way through its defenses. They are prepared for every magical eventuality. What if I just hit everything pretty hard with my ax and I got so mad about it that I was hitting it harder than normal? Uh, well, I'm sure the elves would not have stooped so low to defend their fortress from an axe. I've infiltrated a lot of places. Gorg mm -hmm. actually starts running. <laughs> <laughs> um, you see that he uh, um, looks and says, 
but it will also, it will have the, the moon doors and everything else will be powered by elemental pylons. So those will be, uh, Is uh, that something we can destroy? <laughs> they will be protected from any magical attempt. What if I shoot it with a gun? I pull out the gun. <laughs> you see, he says, so there is a name for the <laughs> yes, tube. Yes, it's a gun. There is a tube name. You're a little dick. I like this side of you. <laughs> oh. You are a strange green mouse thing. <laughs> it really grows on you, Grandpapa. You really grow. It, mm. At the beginning, you're at like, ball. You see, it's a lot. He but says, he says end, well, I don't know if, that's a, if it's a spell, the pylons will have been protected. If it's not a spell, the Arcanosmiths who crafted the pylons will not have stooped or sullied themselves to defend the pylons from, what is that, does a little ax come out of that? No, it's, I'd shoot the gun. <laughs> he looks at it and says, what just happened? <laughs> um, there was like a little explosion inside there and it rocketed this little ball, it's a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpapa, are you okay? That's gross. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's gross. That's like some dwarven... Mm, no. No, no, no. <laughs> to a, the concept of a gun? <laughs> he throws out. <laughs> I have soiled myself for the first time since the second age of the moon. Galir, this is your chance. He's low stats. You see, Galir there. says, I would like to marry your daughter. <laughs> what? <laughs> What? Fabian, this is my only what? shot. What? Fabian, you've got to relax. <laughs> it's my not, only wait, shot. Not Fabian, right Fabian, now, Fabian. Fabian. when I'm, am I going to have I'm another so shot? I'm so low. I'm Fabian. so in the pit right now. He grabs you and says, get, you're get low. Your... He says, you're low and he's low. It's Glear's day, baby. <laughs> no, no, it's Glear's day. Literally. Uh, do not. Um, yes! <laughs> Glear walks in and says, Party uh, inspiration. Uh, <laughs> all right, box of doom. I, I, I want to give, um, give Glear the hell back. <laughs> All right, By climbing up on Fabian and holding his mouth. Holding his mouth, you jump up on Fabian. Let's roll Hold here, up. rolling with advantage. Okay, that's a 12. I'm gonna say he needs to be a 20. So it's, uh, uh, no, uh, yeah, he needs to be a 20. He's yes, got proficiency, but minus two as well. So he's My gotta roll an eight. My heart is racing right oh, now. He's gotta roll an eight. In order to make Gotta roll an eight in order to make it. I mean, it. he's also gotta roll a uh, high with a curve. Um, I, <laughs> what's that? Never mind, never mind. Okay. That's a, that's a one. No! He goes up, you see, he goes up and says, Lord Telemine of Kylo Minura, I, like you, am... And he makes himself throw up. We get it, we both get it, we both throw up, we're the throw up boys. And then he passes out. What? <laughs> Did Galir just call himself a throw up boy? He tried to bond with someone <laughs> by making him call me the I boy. I tried to run after Gorgon. I got your back, man. Well, um, I you dragged Galir into the woods. Cool. Um, uh, you see that Sandra Lynn shakes her head, picks up Galir with Riz, puts yeah, him in the van. Um, you guys all head north. Telemine. Bye, Grandpapa. Uh, you see that Telemine turns his vomit into a flock of white crows oh, no. that fly away. No you see, one he says, interacts with those crows. You see, he says, Fabian, may the wind ever carry you away from this planet. Farewell. What? <laughs> Sand. So, um, you see, All right. uh, you... <laughs> Wow, my mom's side of family is weird as hell. <laughs> I never thought we would take a full episode of the show to just dunk on elves. <laughs> <laughs> a full episode. Um, you guys head north. Um, uh, go ahead and make perception checks. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah, 27. We're doing oh, right. terrible today. Oh, I'm sorry. God, it's, a big, it's a big four. Dude, Eleven. mod one. Four, mod one. 27. 12. 27? 11. 11. Um, cool. Um, you arrive at the lip of this valley. Um, uh, what you see as you approach um, is that um, uh, Ida looks out for a second. Well, actually, Sandra Lynn says, okay, so what's our strategy for the approach here? Are we just going after the literal mechanic that will summon uh, the guards? I mean, he suggested that oh, yeah, all, none of the things are defended against physical attack. It seemed that due to the elves' thoughts on physical violence. So, so no I spells also, from here on out because that might trigger them well, knowing that we're here? What if I 
I guess if they're completely protective against spells, I shouldn't even try anything. Because I could disguise myself to look like Adine's mom, and then maybe they would all come after her, and then you guys could run in. I mean, if they kill you, that doesn't help us very they much. They wouldn't kill her, though. I mean, they would, um, with that high her. perception check, you see what you think are like the elemental pylons around Calethriel Tower. Ooh. They're like, here's the issue, though. They're like probably multiple like miles away from each other. You see like a tall tower on the corner of a ridge and off in the corner you see a little bit of smoke as if coming from like a smithy or a forge or something like that. Um, and you, with that 27, you can just sense magical energy moving through this. You guys are not privy to sort of Adine's arcana check, but these are the things that are allowing permanent magical effects to stay standing, almost as like power stations or sources. So um, looking at it with that high perception check, it's basically like there's a couple of almost like our equivalent of like electrical power transformers yeah. that if you were able to knock them out, you would be able to... Basically shut down the magic. Yeah, like basically only the people that were already physically at Calethria would be there. You think that probably looking at it, like you wouldn't have enough time to hit those pylons and then go the miles it takes to get to Calethriel and win before somebody knew some shit was going on. Okay. Like, cause you know, like, just like an electrical <clears throat> grid, if you knock something out, someone's looking at that grid somewhere and goes, oh, we just lost power in one of our like prison centers, right? So, um, so we need three teams. One team to go to one, uh, is it called a pylon, those electrical things? Uh, yes, they're, he, they're called elemental pylons. So there's two one, pylons. There's two, right? We uh, need one team to go to one, one team to go to the other, and then we need an add-on retrieval team. I like that a lot. Yeah. Okay. We also have the goals we have I, to fight. Ida, could, you, to... could you teleport? Uh, Ida looks and says, I have one remaining I have one remaining teleportation spell. And okay. how many would, people would can we, we take need with the you? pylons to be out in order for us to use our magic? Um, you see Ida shrugs and says, I don't personally know the defenses of this place, but if it is as the Lord Telemine has said, then it's reasonable that there will be arcane runic magical defenses at this tower. However, they require some form of power source, and it seems that these pylons are that. Yeah, so we could do two teams, two teams. But, but the third team is waiting until we knock them out to yeah. teleport in. Yes. The third team basically to, we, gets to a message. To teleport off of Fallon, though. We also only Gets need... a message that the pylons are down, then we can cast whatever spells we want without triggering, like, You're without... right. We can't teleport into there, because we have to yeah, use well, that teleportation to get, to get out, out of Fallon, out. Yeah. And you see that um, uh, Ida also... You see, well, Sandra Lynn actually speaks up and says, also, if we're all separated, I don't feel great leaving the two of you at an attacked elven facility without an ability to teleport off of somewhere because the Court of Stars is going to be coming after you. So we need to somehow, I don't want to teleport away with Adine and leave whoever hit those pylons. What if we, what if one group was, went in to save Adine, another group went to one pylon mm -hmm. with Ida, destroyed it, immediately teleported to the other one, destroyed that, and then heads off to the woods to meet Adine's team. But then do we how do we need get that teleport to get out of Falunel? We would all need to meet up anyway. But if if they're teleporting already... I think we need to hit I think, the pylons at, like, at the same time if we okay. can. My understanding was that the teleport was how we all get off of Falunel. Because if one right. if one pylon if one pylon is goes down, then the other pylon that still has like the energy to, to detect that something's going on. Right. I feel like okay. we want to synchronize it. I'm just do casting you? ray of frost inside my orb to make it a fun do little you, slip you, and slide. Because <laughs> I refuse to be broken by these people. <laughs> do you, you have dimension door, right? Um, I do have dimension. Adam, go ahead and give me a constitution. Suit. Oh no. Twelve. Uh, you uh, do not have a point of exhaustion. Your willpower uh, funnels through you, even though you have not been able to trance this night, as you make a slippery little thing for yourself to slide around on. So I have Dimension Door, but that only allows me to bring w uh, one other person. So mm -hmm. I could be a one woman add on retrieval team, considering I can disguise myself. I'm good at stealthing too. Why don't- But that couldn't get you out. Mm -hmm. once um, I you see Sandra Lynn sort of thinks for a second, she says, Baxter can clear a lot of ground. So if we're trying to meet at a middle point, we do have a griffin. Um, the woods are not gonna be great for the hang van. Maybe the hang point is, maybe the hang van is our meeting point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Um, 
she taps and is like, and you have Dimension Door, right, sweetie? Mm-hmm. Okay, so that could be a jump some significant distance, right? Um, we're probably taught, we, we might have enough time to make it through the woods. Uh, we just don't have enough time to, I think, leave people on Falamel, I think. Um, Do you still want to rescue Eowyn if she's in there? Oh, yeah, that was, yeah. That I'm, is what we originally That was a big thing. And then a bunch of stuff happened. Um, yeah, that would be cool if we could do that. Yeah, let's do it. But if it didn't happen, that'd also be fine. Oh, okay. No, we oh, gotta save her, no. she's so hot. Oh, Fabian. yeah, I, I mean, I'd, I'd, love smo- I'd love to get some smooches in. I mean, everyone's <laughs> getting their V car taken, so that'd be. Taken. <laughs> I'd love to have mine uh, removed. Um, uh, Fabian, <laughs> lose yourself removed. in the dance again. <laughs> I saw it. That was the only way you were free. So we need. <laughs> You're the only who, one I want to see dancing able right to now. destroy these pylons? Who actually does, does the damage? That I think anyone I can with do a physical. Lot of damage. I can. Okay. I can. I still have. Maybe. Rog is gonna. Rog is gonna be able to go to town on one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Grogu's gonna be able to go do. on one. Cathilda. Anyone who's doing like brute force and not cool. spells. So should we send hirelings to do? I can be on the, the retrieval balance? team just in case Adine is hurt and I yeah. can heal her. I don't think I should be on the retrieval team. I don't know. You're going to be bad at, really bad at stealth, though. Oh, I'm horrible at stealth. <laughs> <laughs> but if I we're ruining have, the pylons, isn't that fine? I do have well, a healing word, uh, so I can heal her. But, I mean, I think Ida will probably... Ida, do you have the invisibility spell? Yes. But you're casting a spell. Chris, I would, well, that's I what, once that the would, pylons go once down, the pylons go Ida down, casts then we invisibility. Go in. And then we bring Kristen with us. Let's do it. So, so you are Ida going to be... says, once the pylons go down, the magical defenses of the tower will be diminished. Great. Okay. We have a plan. All right, then. Um, we have a plan great. and we have a dance. Uh, cool. This um, is, I feel I think I'm actually getting much my better. temporary really? hit points from this. Who's <laughs> going to which? So I say hirelings to one pylon. Okay. Just to keep it yeah. not complicated, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, then, and then I would like the to three go. of you. Is it? Are we a pylon squad? Are you going to the pylon? Or are you going to? Oh the... no, you're stealthing. Yeah. I feel right. like. I mean, we should. I we could. I feel like uh, myself. Maybe I, I feel like if if um, why don't we do this? Why don't I go with you two? Hirelings go to one pylon. I go with you two to the other pylon. That way, I can scout ahead with my good stealth because mm-hmm. we don't have any magic, and I can maybe give you guys help by okay. get, getting ahead. Um, and then these guys can go in with Ida invisible. Great. And then um, we can all meet back at the van. As you guys are sitting here discussing this very fun covert op, hitting multiple power stations <laughs> and, and doing this like big coordinated attack, uh, we're gonna move to Calethrical Tower. Um, uh, Adine, um, you uh, look up uh, and see Kier and your father both enter. Um, Kier approaches you, um, and, uh, she smiles, just sort of boom, boom, hits her staff into the ground, and as she does so, she comes right up to the orb and says, We have discovered, I believe, as much useful information as we can from gleaning your thoughts, and I wanted to come in one last time before we make a final assessment of what is to be done. Um, your father wished to have a word with you, if he could. Uh, she smiles, leaves, uh, Anguin is standing there. Adine. You... You can't honestly believe that there is anything to be gained from your stubbornness. I don't You have made it crystal clear that you do not think very highly of me. I can assure you that though I have made decisions you disagree with, I do not wish to see my daughter executed for treason. Is he speaking to me in Elvish? Yes. I'm gonna respond to him in common. Um, And I'm gonna say, you don't wanna see me 
executed for treason, but you're keeping Aelwyn tortured and alive? How is Aelwyn being tortured? She's proven herself a threat. She can't be allowed to regain access to her spells. She's not being harmed or injured. She has... It... Do you see she bleeding out on the floor? Is there a torture rack that her bones are being broken on? How am I being treasonous? I didn't ask to be the Elven Oracle. No, Adine, you didn't ask, but occasionally some people see fit to execute their responsibilities. Show me in the law book where it says that me staying in solace is treason. You know... I demand a lawyer. Well, I'll bring that to the Court of Stars. This is not some higgledy-piggledy democracy with an encoded constitution of laws and rights. This is a civilized nation governed by seven immortal dancers who exist on a spindle <laughs> and sing to the various faces of the moon, Adine. So if you want to ask one of them to stop their immortal singing to give you a lawyer, they will conjure up some kind of, I don't know, tree spirit, okay? I curse you in the name of the seven seas and of the face of the moon and in the shining of the stars and in the brightness of the sun, I curse you. You are not my father. You see, he says, well, those are very hurtful words, and if you had a spell slot, I'm sure that I would be very interested I cast Tasha's hideous laughter on him. He goes, <laughs> Ow! My face! It doesn't do this. <clears throat> Sorry, ha. Uh, and you see that uh, Kier comes back in and says, Ah, Mr. Avenant, you've humiliated yourself. You see, uh, Kier looks at you and says, I demand a lawyer. Very well. I shall bring that. I'm a minor. I am underage. In prison. Kier sort of squints and looks up at Angwin. She dispels the Tasha's laughter on him, and you see he says, so a lawyer is basically somebody who <laughs> um, is sort of a, a, they use a hidden language to prevent state actions from happening to people. I demand to see the ambassador of Solace. You see, Kier looks at that and says, and that affects her. You see, she goes, you are not a Salesian citizen, and so therefore, I am an underage student of the Eggfort Adventuring Academy. You see, she says, oh, the Eggfort. And you hear, <laughs> and a scarlet A appears in front of you. And you see that a the illusion hologram of Arthur Eggfort appears. Um, you see, as it does, um, <laughs> Arthur Eggfort says, hello and greetings. I am Arthur Eggford, and if you are watching this recorded message, one of my students has claimed... He's a very serious man. <laughs> uh, ...has claimed diplomatic need of my help in foreign affairs. Now, this... Uh, you see that he repeats that in a couple different languages very quickly? And then you see he says, uh, In this instance, you should know that this student has been apprehended unlawfully and is under the protection of not only my academic independence, but also the laws of the nation of Solace. If they are harmed or injured in any way, ruin will be brought down on your heads ninefold. <laughs> the screen like zooms out and sees him on a seaside cliff summoning storms. And you see he says, I shall bind you to the center of the earth. I shall put you into the center of the sun. I shall summon 1,000 dragons to devour you for endless days and send your soul back to the dawning of time to live as a moat of worthless scum across vast aeons. The students of my school shall not be Fucked with! Um, yeah! Uh, and um, you see, he says, Even now, doom will 
impose upon you. If you wish to avert this doom, press yes. <laughs> if you wish to welcome your doom, press no. Ba -bing! These two things appear. Kier looks at you, presses no, and you see Arthur Eggford says, very well, you have chosen the way of pain. Goodbye. And the thing disappears. Uh, and at that moment, alarms sound. Uh, and you see uh, the uh, sort of movement of the runes react. Uh, and what it reacts to is something we will have to discover oh. on January 8th oh. when we come back. Wow. Um, oh. You're in for it oh. now. Uh, uh, as it does so, uh, guys, uh, that's all for this episode of Dimension 20 Live. It presents Fantasy High Sophomore Year. We'll be back January 8th. Have a very happy holidays and happy new year. Uh, check out dropout.tv. Use promo code NICE for 69% off your first month. Check out the Dropout store for a bunch of fun merch. Uh, and uh, that's all. It's been so awesome doing this live show with you guys and continuing the adventures of the bad kids. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Happy